2414 is a podcast about finding hope and common ground through casual conversation. Like the friends on the road in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 24, verse 14, we want to walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. Thanks for walking with us. All right, hey, welcome to twenty four fourteen. We're doing it, Chin. We're doing it. I'm not. Is it getting better or worse? Yes. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> some things, both. Uh, good viewers and listeners, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Dan Weber, sitting across from Shane, Charles, Welter, and we have a, Plus, a, yeah. a a friend of the show with us, Brenda Schmeling, Sogovia, Rachel Langbean. Yes. No, I don't know how many names you need. There's maybe some more in there. Okay. So that's, that's all right. We can yeah. get, do you probably have a middle name? I actually don't have a middle name. Really? Do you have just an initial or nothing? No, no middle name. Yeah. Wait, is, do you have two last names? I have so? two last names, which okay. are technically still my maiden last names, but no middle name. Neither huh. do my siblings. What? My dad doesn't believe in middle names for us. I would have <laughs> thought like you have to have one or at least an initial. He like always, Harry S. Truman, his, S yeah. is his middle name. Like he just, it's not short for something. It's just S. No. And dot. I get asked, oh. and people think I'm like embarrassed of a middle name, and that's why I'm not telling. Like I really don't. <laughs> wow. Have one. Yeah. I'm learning so much already. There you go. Wow. All right. Um, <laughs> also, Charles is not Shane's middle name, but that's okay. Maybe as, as far as we know, mm. uh, John is my middle name with an H. In case anybody's curious, there. Very important. Well, uh, welcome to today's show, Brenda. Thanks for uh, <laughs> joining us back at the table. Shane, thanks for showing up today. Oh uh, yeah, this would be really awkward if it was just me. Um, just you. it would not be as fun for anyone. Uh, t- <laughs> we're going to start with uh, highs and lows. Our guest uh, Brenda has brought the question of the day today, and I'm still stumped by that. And then we're going to get into our topic at hand, which is this idea of seen, uh, recognizing that. Uh, the young people uh, and the older people and many people in our world are are hurting and anxious and experiencing despair, depression, hopelessness. And and we believe that community matters and specifically in, in the Christian church, uh, Christ by his spirit has joined us together to love one another and, and bear one another's burdens. So we're going to kind of talk about uh, young people in the world today and how some of us less young people can support them and love them and care for them. But first, we're going to go highs and lows. And Brenda, what's our question of the day? What's a a smell that reminds you of spring? So maybe something you've smelled recently that you're like, oh, yes, it's spring now, at your least here favorite, in Washington. Your favorite <laughs> spring smell. Yes. Or does it have to be a favorite spring smell or something that you smell and now you know it's spring? Yeah, it doesn't have to be a favorite. It can be just okay. something that reminds you of spring or you smell it and you're like, okay, okay. we're getting warmer weather now. A, a scent or a smell, something yes. you've sniffed recently. Yes. <laughs> that <laughs> lets you know spring is Everyone upon us. Is so curious <laughs> oh my goodness so uh shane thanks for going first lows highs oh, and what course. kind of smells have you been smelling <laughs> all right yeah the 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 spring smell of smell mm-hmm. springs all right so highs lows uh really cool lauren and i um shared this recently at staff meeting but a uh, uh really cool high at our neighborhood lauren and i live we found out we can like be members of the neighborhood and we got private beach access from that so we've got like a key card and like this super You're in now yeah we're mm-hmm. in the club Gosh. <laughs> it's like the thousand feet below do you club, walk though. with your your nose a little higher in the air yeah okay do you walk slower yeah. like yes because it's like so steep the, swagger. <laughs> the stairs to get there are like comical just a safety steep. concern it's just it's also yeah it's really fascinating and really cool area so we're really excited to use it once it continues to warm up do you have like cardigans in the evening now <laughs> Only on the yacht. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so fancy, Shane. So fancy. Just tied around your neck. <laughs> yeah. With my uh, ascot. There your, we go. That's oh, the yes. Your boat shoes. Yeah. Oh Actually, I'm wearing my, my boat shoes. Gosh. <laughs> I want to be Shane Welter when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, they're okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. That, that's really awesome. Lowe's, um, uh, my time planning for when I'm, like, not at work isn't great yet or maybe it's just it could just be like post-work routines or whatnot else but i feel like once i'm done with work i still don't have like a good like not good at like planning time out for after work it's like all right i'm done with work we got stuff to do oops i crashed for the (laughs) 12th month in a row looks like i'm behind on everything again so like i don't know that that like life planning time stuff 
kind of want to be better at, but yeah, it's still all good stuff. But, um, so smelly Springs, um, <laughs> smelly mattress Springs. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what the, uh, the category is now. No, I don't know. The season of spring. So, uh, it's going to sound weird, but my favorite like spring smell or like the coming of spring, it's like the smell of the sun, but I know that doesn't make sense because you can't really smell the sun, but it's the same way. Like you smell rain, you know, and it's like, Oh, it mm-hmm. smells like rain. Mm. It, when the sun is out and it's like a warm sun, you, you can like smell it. It's like, Oh, it's like a bit of humidity. And also like that warm concrete mm. smell. Okay. And it's warm concrete. Yeah. Like yeah. you're walking out from a, super air conditioned building outside and it's like so fresh oh, air that fresh like warm air though fresh warm air okay. yeah it's more of a nose feeling than a smell but a nose <laughs> feeling <laughs> i don't know how to describe it. i think people understand what a nose feeling is to how that's different than a smell yeah this is different yeah. it's more you of can a nose feel feeling. the smell rather than smelling it yeah <laughs> smell that smell shane all right, you made me go first. You, <laughs> you good luck. Good, good. No, it's, good. that's good. I'm just I'm trying to uh, experience the the nose sensation through memory of yeah of the warmth coming off of the of this the asphalt and cement. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Um, for me, Lowe's. Oh man, I I, I am in, I've said this probably multiple times on the co- podcast and more frequently in my normal life. I I am embarrassed at how repetitive my lows get <laughs> in that you know at some point just figure it out like you you've been you know complaining about the same thing for weeks or <laughs> every other week you're saying the same thing Weber get it together so I, I think my two lows are parenting is really hard and knowing when to be firm and when to be gracious and you know those uh, like to- uh, I don't know how to describe it. There's like a toy. It's like a tube with some like colored liquid in it. It kind of like sloshes back and forth. Uh, uh, can you picture that sort of like rectangle? And it's yeah. like I don't know. It's like the waves that go back and forth. Yeah. If you can imagine that, I feel like I'm just like completely like wrong with like that. I'm like I'm just bouncing backwards. So like when the kids need grace, I'm too firm. And then when I need to be firm, I'm just like, well, forget it. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> and like, I'm just like, I'm just like totally off. And like, so ideally, you know, I'm gracious when they need grace and I'm, you know, stern when they need something stern. And I feel like I'm just like, oh, for 15 right now. It's just like, I'm just, I'm just all, I'm just backwards <laughs> every moment and everything I'm doing is wrong. And, and then I just get resigned to just forget it. And then I, I can only disengage for so long and then I blow up and it's even worse and so then I'm well then I'm not going to say anything next time and oh, parenting sounds hard. so parenting <laughs> exhausting mm. and I don't even need to bat a thousand right now but like one out of six would be awesome you know like mm-hmm. if, I, if I knew what the right thing to do was like one out of every five to ten times and actually did what I knew was right that would be huge um, but right now it's it's kind of grim uh, so anyway I got great kids and yet it's really hard. Also, the other the other low going with your Shane, and I've said it before, is I'm not in good routines right now. So I'm not mm-hmm. running. I'm not managing my time in the sense of do I want to run before work or after work or how do I want to spend my evenings as opposed to I just get home and I tell myself I'm tired or hungry when I'm probably not. I'm probably just bored and anxious and not <laughs> focused. I don't need to sit down and sigh as if I'm really, really tired. I, I, mm-hmm. Yesterday I went to bed, looked at my watch, and I had 4,000 steps, mm. which is pretty low for probably most people and really low for me. Pretty like, low for a runner. Yeah. So, <laughs> And yet, like, I, in my, and I was probably somewhat tired from mental fatigue, but I didn't, like, do anything. And yet, like, I kind of worked up, like, well, I, you know, I better start winding down. I'm kind of mm. tired. It's been a long day. And I should probably make another plate of nachos. I'm kind of hungry. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not hungry. I'm not tired. I'm just kind of lethargic and lacking initiative yeah so that sounds like a lot of lows highs a couple <laughs> um kraken are still in the playoffs second round Woo-hoo. that's ridiculous for hockey um nhl shane's basketball team is not as we learned on our episode <laughs> last time <laughs> the st louis <laughs> cardinals have 
finally won two games in a row for like the first time all season. We're last place in baseball, but that's a, uh, but they they turned it around and it took uh, a series against the Chicago Cubs to do it. So that felt really good. It's kind of like a double win. So we not only started winning, but it was against the Cubs. So that felt good. Division, yeah. And then the 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 really exciting high in the Weber household is we bought a window air conditioning unit. Whoa! So, You're ready. So we've never had air conditioning since we lived in Washington, and boy, oh boy, like fool me once, shame on you. Fool me five years in a row, like shame on me. Figure it out. Yeah. It's uh, it's hot. The, not most of the year. It's like a week and a half a year or 10 days a year you need it, and we have not had it. And more recently, I don't know, it's going to be 90 this weekend. Yeah, so, so my, my task tomorrow is my day off, and I put it on my calendar. I'm going to unbox and install this bad boy. So that's exciting. I hope so. It might be terrible. I, I have to do it when the kids aren't around. So I don't just like lose my mind <laughs> and yeah. probably not even have Charlotte around. We learned that early in our marriage mm. that there are a number of things we do well together and home projects. Typically it's not one of them. Um, right. We barely survived hanging blinds the first time we tried that. Uh, it was, I can hang the blinds or you can hang the blinds, <laughs> but you over my shoulder telling me how to hang the blinds is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one scenario that doesn't end well for any of us. Um, so, okay, that's my lows and highs. Uh, smelly smell. Smelly smell. Boy, yeah. I am not uh, an arborist. I don't know a whole lot about trees, but in St. Arborist? Saint, oh, in, like in, uh, that kind of Horticulturalist? Thing. I don't know. In St. Louis, um, there was a tree every spring getting into summer that smelled like fish. It was a terrible smell. I hated it. But it, it sounds gross. It let me know that spring was here, that it blossomed, and it was like, it is pungent, it Ugh. is fishy, it Ugh. is no good. Um, and there was, a, it might be it was dogwoods. I don't know if my brothers or dad are listening to this. It was the tree we had in front of our house when you're facing the house on the left side. And it was kind of white flowers into pink or pink into white. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to say dogwood, but I don't think it actually was. Um, comment below if you know. Yeah, what comment it is. below if you know what kind of <laughs> stinky tree smells like fish. I could probably just Google it, but that's it's not fun. No, it's not good. But that's that's my spring smell. My other positive one is fresh grass. That sounds crazy. Um, cliche to say, but I cut the grass a couple days ago, and it that was a good smell. Was that your first time mowing? This Second season? one. Second. One. I mowed a week ago for the first time in you know nine months. It felt like, and then it was like four days later, it needed it again, <laughs> and I was like, oh no, this is <laughs> this is gonna be exhausting. So okay, It'll grow so, quickly. So yeah, yeah. Um, uh, fishy trees is my spring spell smell. It's not good. Not no, a fan. It's not a good one. <laughs> but it's that's that smells like spring to me. Okay. All right. Okay, Brenda, no middle name Segovia. Uh, that's me. Lows, highs, and what kind of smells have you been smelling? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, I'll do my lows first to get those out of the way. I just had lots of doctor's appointments, also dentist appointments. So I have to get all four wisdom teeth out <gasps> finally, probably this summer. I'm not looking forward to it, so it's a low already. I just, God. I had they, one last year, one out of four. And it was like a week on my back. Yeah. See, I'm not looking forward they to it. They tried making me. I, I, have I said, them. no, you still have all four years. Yeah, I said, <gasps> no, I declined. Yeah. <laughs> like I they're... have all four and it's just, it is time. They're like causing other issues. So it's time for them to come out, but I'm nervous about like yeah. getting put under, like that would be my first ever that was my surgery. Favorite part. That was my favorite part. What am I going to say when I come out oh. from that and uh, Who's the, recovery? Well, how long will my cheeks be chubby? Do you trust Adam to record, like to not record you? Yes, I do. All right. <laughs> I, yeah, we'll find out. I actually we'll find out. do. And he does need to drive me there, drive me after. So that's my lows. Just lots of doctor's appointments mm -hmm. recently and dentists and not looking forward to wisdom teeth getting pulled high is related to spring um we this is our first spring at our new house where we moved into so we're finally figuring out what's a weed what's not so i've been <laughs> weeding and that was a workout and just every day it seems like something workout. else is blooming yes because you're 
Like, are you like physically like yanking bushes out or? I'm yanking. I mean, I yanked weeds for like three or four hours yeah, and I was sore hurt. the next like, day, like squatting. Just okay. I was just kind of squatting there and like moving around like a monkey, like just pulling <laughs> weeds. So, you, if you're not watching, by the way, go to the video. Brenda's going to demonstrate her weeding this is um, how practice. I weed. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was sore. No one else weeds like that. So it's been fun, like looking out the window, walking around every day. It feels like something else is blooming mm -hmm. and we've got a fig tree that's got all of the little baby figs so adam doesn't think that i'm gonna eat all the figs this year i said you probably shouldn't by the way i want to i don't all I'm the like, figs i'm like i can share some but figs they're not good for you they're gonna yeah, they're gonna fruit. accelerate uh your your digestive system. oh they're like a fiber yeah okay they're gonna they're keep, delicious. keep things moving okay and i can make jams i can do lots of stuff with that so <laughs> anyway that's a high is seeing everything that's blooming and which made me think of this like smelly smell kind of a question <laughs> um i in trying to figure out what everything is i realized i could just google it like i can take a picture and google scans it and that's tell amazing. what plant it is and there's one that smells really really good and um um, I took a picture of it and it says it's a Mexican orange blossom and it smells so good. Like the whole backyard is just so fragrant with that. And this one other like creepy vine, creeping vine kind creepy. of a plant. It's Different. not creepy, <laughs> but it just, it smells really, really good. So Mexican orange blossoms. Yeah. It's just like white flowers on this big, huge bush and they smell really good. So you, you came with a positive smell that yes. you knew the name of. And I said a stinky fish tree, unknown genus and species. I said the sun, so <laughs> I <laughs> said the experience the nose of feeling. nose feeling. <laughs> experience. Yep, that's us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we did it. We did it. So, yeah, comment below. Uh, highs, lows, and how are your nose feelings been feeling? What kind of experiences have they been yeah. sniffing? Your favorite nose feelings lately. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. Well, our, our, our topic today is, is really um, kind of vague and undefined, and I'm okay with that because one of the reasons we started this podcast is just to talk about what we're going through, talk about normal life. Um, in Luke chapter 24, these two guys are walking on a road to Emmaus discussing all the things that had been happening in Jerusalem. Jesus shows up in the conversation and it, it becomes this, this gracious thing where they see the work of God. And I doubt they started off on that road going, okay, we've got a seven mile walk. Here's the agenda. You're like, no, it's just conversations happen. And one of the things that the three of us have been talking a lot about, thinking a lot about is, is the young people in our lives, um, not necessarily our kids, but just we're, we're part of a church here together. We care about young people. Um, we have different experiences with youth events, kind of formally in jobs or just informally in, in the community that we're part of. And recognizing it's a hard time to be a kid. Um, mm -hmm. And it sounds a little bit, I don't know what to say, but like it's always been hard. Like it's never been fun. I mean, part of being a kid is always fun. But like, I would have said, oh, my childhood was hard and tough in certain ways, but my childhood was not today. I was a teenager a few years ago, um, but I was not a teenager in today's world. And and so that's just in, in a, a number of different angles. We've been talking about that. And Brenda is leading a life group here at St. Luke's, kind of a, a short-term small group ministry around this topic. So maybe Brenda, could you just kind of get the ball going with um, what's your life group about? Um, what is maybe even what is a life group at St. Luke's? So people who are listening, whether they're part of St. Luke's or not, can have some context for what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. So two parts to that. So life groups um, here, like you said, it's kind of this short term, small group ministry that we have here that um, is sometimes a Bible study. Other times it's kind of based on a book that is of interest to the group and then there you have time to to pray together and it's not for very long so you're not committing to being part of it for the rest of your life but <laughs> so how many how many weeks is your small group minus six weeks. Group? six weeks minus six weeks some people's are are longer so we're going to meet um tuesday evenings for a couple hours for six weeks we just had our first one this last week and we're using this book called scene and kind of what inspired it for us is I was hearing a lot of parents of teenagers around me 
talking about how hard it is to be a parent of a teenager and the struggles that their kids were going through with with anxiety, with depression, especially coming out of the pandemic where there was a lot of isolation. It just seemed to kind of heighten anxiety in their kids and um, kind of talking to them. It would be really nice to be able to talk to other parents and not feel alone in that. Mm. So how could we structure something like that or, or help make that happen? And just turns out that we were coming up on another season of these life groups. And so I kind of looked for different resources and this one book scene was um, one, a short book. So something that we could maybe read through that'd be helpful. And it didn't have anything groundbreaking, something that we'd never heard of before, but it's kind of nice to be reminded of some things and just to have other people to talk about it. So we just met for the first time this last week and we just, you know, nobody's an expert and kind of say that, especially for myself as leading it, because I'm not even a parent. I don't have <laughs> children of my own. You're just somebody who cares. I'm an adult who cares. And yeah. so, and not everybody in the group is a parent. Some of them are, and some of them are people that don't have children themselves, and, but they've got nieces and nephews or kid, friends kids who they care about and they want to connect with them, but aren't sure how to connect with them. So yeah. we're going to talk about that stuff. That's awesome. So it's yeah. probably worth just re underlining what Brenda said about her life group. Uh, the three of us aren't experts either. Mm -hmm. We don't have degrees in this. And uh, the, the book we're maybe referring to a little bit throughout the day is called Seen, S-E-E-N, like I see you, you've been seen. Subtitle is Healing Despair and Anxiety in Kids and Teens Through the Power of Connection by Will Hutcherson and Chinway Williams, mm -hmm. um, published by Parent Q. Um, so it, the, the book, we, we don't um, fully endorse everything that is in the book. It's just a conversation piece to help us connect. Yeah. I, don't I don't mean to sound too cautious, but I think it's just worth saying like, yeah, oh, absolutely. I heard Pastor and Brenda mention this book. It must be the book. Maybe. I mean, there's some things that are going to be helpful, other things that are less helpful, but um, it's a, a a tool to further a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Brenda, what what are you what are you hoping to experience as a group in these weeks, or as a result of these weeks together? I'm hoping that in the life group that that we reach a point where people do feel comfortable being vulnerable and sharing stuff about their their family, some of those hard things, and that there is encouragement back and forth. Um, I don't want people to come in expecting to have like, here's the answer. This is what's going to fix your teenager. This will solve all of your problems because that's not, that's not realistic. That's not where we're going for. But by the end of these six weeks, we'll know each other better. I know some of the people in the group fairly well, some people a little bit less. And one person is brand new, met them for the first time this mm. week. Um, but I'm hoping that by the end, of these six weeks, like that's somebody whose name I know. And when I see them, I can say, Hey, how is your insert name here? How is your child doing? I remember you mentioned this. Um, I've been praying about that. Like, how is that going? Um, and have that continue beyond the six weeks, even if we're not meeting formally on a weekly basis, but it's a new community of people that's checking in on each other. Yeah. I, I heard you use the word vulnerability. And we're also talking about despair and anxiety. Uh, Shane, what um, what was your experience growing up where, as a teen? Were things like vulnerability valued? And was despair and anxiety kind of an ever-present hum? Or did those feel like, I knew some kids who were open with their feelings, or I knew some kids who were anxious, or everybody was open, or everybody was anxious. What was that like for you? Yeah, I would say, um, f I guess in my time and period where I was, and the setting I was in Wisconsin, and I had a smaller class too, um, so that might have skewed some things in my setting, whatnot else, but it, it seemed pretty like, like shutters shutters on kind of high school like everything's a facade like everyone's kind of playing their own emotions and more or less you kept your true feelings to yourself mm -hmm. but i'd say some of my like closest um friends and relationships that i had that's where we we could be more 
honest and deep with one another. Those were definitely the best. But then also, uh, a lot of most of my time was spent in high school setting. That's where a lot of my activities and time was spent. So a lot of like coaches, teachers, mentors in that setting. I guess I, I, I couldn't have like really deep conversations with them, but kind of semi like a little below surface about like, what are you going to do with your, like going to do with your life? And, um, I guess kind, kind of things like that. But as far as like deeper emotions go, didn't have too much of a place for that besides just close friends. Yeah. I don't know if that answers no, what I'm you were just, saying. I'm just curious. I, I, Cause as I'm thinking about some of these things, I, I've probably grown, I don't know how to measure it, but I'm far more open and comfortable being vulnerable and sharing difficulties and struggles and weaknesses and failings at, at this point in my life than I've ever been. And looking back to like being a teenager, I, I don't have like any memories of sharing difficulties. <laughs> like, like the difficulties were, you know, that guy was faster than me in cross country or this other guy has a harder slap shot in hockey. Like it wasn't, it was more than arm's length away. It was something super objective. You know, I, I didn't score as high on somebody else's a test as I wanted to, or I, I didn't get the seat on the bus I wanted, but it wasn't like I'm struggling with this and I'm anxious or scared. Like, I think, I think it's hard to, cause I mean, thinking about like for myself and that not that distant future, at least like in high school, that's when I really started formulating emotions, like, or like I, I could start identifying them in some sense. Like, mm -hmm. like as a kid, I definitely had anger management and like, I just was m just, I threw temper tantrums for losing and whatnot and that like in competitions and whatnot. Um, but I didn't like know anything about that other than people saying like, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Stop but, like, feeling that. <laughs> yeah. Like I, it's, it's vague. Like I knew what it kind of meant to be sad and angry, whatnot else. But, uh, but being able to like talk about it, was it was still a little foreign, but I did have some great like teachers um, in my high school who I, I really loved. In in our class, we had like two or three times a semester. He just set aside all like curriculum and like, hey, this is just our deep day. And we're just gonna talk about real life things, hmm. and that that stuck with me even now. Like just like to give students just that space to like mm -hmm. process emotions because there's not a class we you take I don't think maybe there might be now but like <laughs> when I was in high school like I, I didn't have a class that was like like let's talk about just deep things and your emotions and how does that make you feel like mm -hmm. stuff like that and and I could he I can imagine whether our listener or somebody out in the world today hearing that and almost having like a caricature of, Oh, our kids can't do math. They don't history, but they've got a day where they just talk about feelings. Uh, and, and yet there's something really important about learning the skill of processing what you're experiencing. Um, mm -hmm. Brenda, what about you? Uh, growing up teen years, did you have a, a culture and a place where, vulnerability and expression was valued or um, I guess we'd, Shane, I didn't, we didn't really talk about kind of the anxiety or, or despair angle of things. Maybe we'll come back to that. But just yeah. in terms of Brenda, for you, did, did you grow up, you know, taught and validating, Hey, you should express yourself and learn how to share feelings and experience them in helpful ways. Not within family like that. That wasn't a thing, but among friends, we did share what was going on and how we were feeling. And I think that was kind of the norm at our school within your friend groups. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to tell your whole class, I'm really struggling with this, or this is a hard day for me because of this, but your group of friends, yes. Um, definitely more. I, it, this is all just making me think, there's an elementary school here nearby and in their fifth grade classroom every day they do affirmations together so kind of after recess which tends to be a time when <laughs> uh, there might be some arguments or some hurt feelings about different things they come back to class and 
the lights are turned down low. They put on the same video every day with somebody kind of leading affirmations and like deep breathing and everything mm. and just kind of encouraged to to talk things out. But also if you're still not okay with the person, that's okay. Maybe you guys just don't sit together for a little while, but it's okay to feel the feelings, which was not a thing that we did in school when I was growing up. Yeah. So there is a different emphasis on on anxiety and just feeling your feelings. And what do you mean by affirmations? Um, or what does that particular yes. video mean? Um, the teacher? They do kind of like a... Like I, I am smart. I, I am worthy of respect. I respect mm. others, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, and I, like most of my thoughts and conversations, I don't have an end or angle here that I'm going towards, mm -hmm. but just kind of recognizing that, um, my experience of feelings today is different than it has been. And it's different than each of us. And some of that is like men and women, boys and girls is probably a, a mm -hmm. factor. Yeah. Some of it is, I know I'm just wondering, am I more expressive now? Cause I'm older. Like I didn't mm -hmm. cry before and now I cry easily. Mm -hmm. Um, kids, I think kids were a big milestone for that for me. I, I, when, before we had kids, I remember watching the notebook is, is what it was. It was Charlotte and I watching the notebook and she's bawling. And she turns and I'm just straight face watching the show, like arms crossed. And it was, you know, I was enjoying it just fine. And oh. and she, she hits me and she's like, do you even remember the last time you cried? Like, she, like for her, like my soul would, had shriveled and died and I didn't have feelings. How could you not feel this right, right now? And, yeah. Or, and not just feel it, but not express that feeling through, mm. you know, mm -hmm. my, but now like, I, you know, you put Field of Dreams on or <laughs> Lord of the Rings or Gladiator. Or the 2011 Cardinal World <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I, I know you're being silly, Shane, but you watch David Freeze hit. Oh my gosh. Or when, when oh, no. Pujols got went around the bases for his 700th home run, gets a standing ovation on the road, like, <laughs> like I, I'm genuinely moved in those moments. Mm -hmm. And um, we read we're reading a book right now with our kids called The Wing Feather Saga. Andrew Peterson wrote it, mm -hmm. songwriter, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And as I'm reading a lot of my kids, I bet once a month I have to stop and like regroup because I mm -hmm. can't keep reading it. Um, and so I, I, I'm just for my own sake processing is that cause I'm older, probably part of it. Um, but also it seems like the world around me is much more okay. Kind of not being okay. Or like it's, it's more normal to express, um, hurts or fears. And, and even as I say that, I'm thinking about the news where pick whatever your favorite cable news channel is nobody's being safe or vulnerable or, you know, everybody's just attacking and defensive there too. So it's not like the world is now just rainbows and unicorns and everybody's singing Kumbaya by any means. Um, yeah, I, I think it is both things. I think some of it does come with age. Like you just are more, you've experienced more and you're more willing to share some of that maybe. And I think I don't care as much like about other yeah. people. Like yeah. I don't care if you see me cry. I, I, I think maybe I'm just more confident in that sense of yeah. if it bothers you that I cry, whatever, deal with yeah. it. Yeah. I also think more people really um, want to care for other people. At least I've noticed that even in the asking of the question, like, how are you? Way more people ask a follow-up, no, but really, how are you? Mm. So people want to to know you really want to know what's going on. So it makes it easier to, to share and be vulnerable and be real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. And I guess like to bring it uh, back a little uh so like yeah i think like emotions and your your character and how you process things is always in some ways developing like your brain and your psychology mm -hmm. is is that was the other factor i forgot to say yeah one is age one is maybe sex and the other is just maybe 14 year old brain i, I don't know how it's brains develop yeah, yeah. I, it's just I, I, like a 21? it's a real thing and like like kids are uh kids, youth, high schoolers are going through a lot mm -hmm. in a stage where their brains are still developing. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's, that's just hard. Like, and like in, in some, like, like in some ways, I think it's just, just acknowledge it. Like kid, like kids have it hard. Like, 
like, pairing that with like, hormones too is yeah just, like just yeah. being like even if the world was a was a polished clean awesome place <laughs> yeah right but like mm-hmm. even if it was being in high school is hard enough like mm-hmm. yeah just in general yeah it, so uh gosh yeah it I had, a, I think, a pr- pretty good teen experience, and yet it was hard, and I didn't have many of the factors that our young people today are experiencing. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to, by the way, I don't want to segue into something of like the good old days, and we got to make America Christian again to fix everything. That's none of that's what I'm saying, mm-hmm. but I think it's worth acknowledging that, like, questions of sexual identity were not asked when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to wonder. And and by the way, I'm not saying that's a bad question or, you know, we're evil or the world is wrong for trying to navigate these things. But I had enough questions without anyone in my life inviting me to question something about mm-hmm. who I am. Um, I remember when um, the Columbine shooting happened, I was nearing the end of high school, I think. Um, but I never had a, a shelter in place, lockdown, active shooter drill. Even at college, I, I'd never experienced no, that. I didn't either. Jane, did you have those in school? Uh, no. I mean, it definitely started to ramp up at that point, but it mm-hmm. never was like a reality in some ways until like I think my senior, junior, senior year. Then we like every once in a while had a, like a cop like, patrolling the parking lot and Mm -hmm. um but like by the time i graduated that's when it started to get a little more real just like around that especially for high schools because i remember students getting like expelled and like take like uh expelled or you know on a hiatus because they they joked about it like in a manner that like maybe they were kidding maybe not but like like we got to take this seriously Mm -hmm. now I do remember that. I don't think we had official active shooter drills, but we did have sometimes alerts of um, somebody made a joke or like there was a rumor of a threat that a student had something in their locker or was planning to go to the school. Mm -hmm. And then it's just kind of a lockdown drill, but it wasn't Mm -hmm. what the drills are now. Like we just kind of, you lock the doors, you just, you keep going with your lessons or whatever, but you're... That's as far as the drill. You don't have to like, you know, lock the door and close the shades and and hide and pretend pretend to be silent as if your life depends on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Like that. I even just saying that aloud is is alarming to say. Never like never had to worry about like my life in school. Like I I never like besides like a a tornado, like but like not Mm -hmm. like not like worried about like i loved fire drills cool we get a break we get to go outside this is awesome this is hilarious yeah yeah earthquake too i'm just gonna take a nap under my desk (laughs) yeah like it was great yeah it wasn't you need to be silent otherwise you're gonna get us all killed Mm -hmm. yeah i so to to have that as like every time there's a drill those thoughts are there Mm -hmm. and every time it's on the news those thoughts are there right so i mean how many times every year are our kids being forced to think about you might be an unwilling combatant in in a one-sided shootout Mm -hmm. like i and and i've been a civilian my whole life i've never been in war like i that's scary for me Mm -hmm. and and i think this this is only a a a fraction of of the uh, differences that teens go through nowadays like the just the emergence of modern technology has changed so much in our world just like cell phones and the internet social media is is all stuff that like was very much emerging like and i was like part of that generation when that was coming but it wasn't like i think as consuming as it is today um like some people had phones like in high school um definitely i'd I'd say most people had like social media snapchat that kind of thing um, but I think it, it dwarfs in comparison to what it is today where like, it's just a whole different like world, uh, teens and youth are living in, in social media. It's just, it's a different world. Like it's very different than the physical world. It's kind of part of it, but mm. it's, it's just very different personalities, very different, like entertainment and like content and what I was going to say the see. what you consume through technology and social media is way different than what you used to be able to consume. Sure. I saw this like, 
statistic graph recently about um, where Gen Z is, um, is uh, what's the word? Interacting the most with like brands and it's, mm. and it's Instagram. Like that is where they, they are buying things. Like that is kind of this like rotating store of what else can I buy? What else can I compare to? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're constantly seeing, uh, yeah, so, so a lot. And, yeah. Yeah. And like the, the, I think the phrase is the 24 hour news cycle is part of that as well, that, you know, it used to be that there was the evening news and that's mm-hmm. when you found out what happened. And now there are multiple channels that 24 seven are running some scary story with another scary story in the ticker and maybe multiple side by side. And mm-hmm. usually those people are yelling at each other and I, you know, I, I don't handle that well, I, and I'm a, I'm a relatively mm-hmm. stable, mature adult person with a reasonably developed brain. I can't handle, like, I'm anxious. That bothers me. I've all but severed myself from the news. I, I, I skim the headlines, but I can't watch Fox or CNN. I, I, I don't. It's mm-hmm. not good for me. If you're on it for too long, I mean, it is. It is depressing to watch. It's you start to think that there's nothing good in the world and there are no good people left and everybody's just crazy and and awful to each other. Mm-hmm. Something about like so I didn't have social media till I was in grad school and then it was fun for a little bit and then it was unhealthy for a little bit and then I don't know 5 years ago I said enough is enough. This is not good for me. Mm-hmm. And and that was a freeing moment. Um I remember going for a walk with my kids and almost took a picture of something. And I realized the only reason I was about to take that picture was to post it. Mm -hmm. And I I was no longer enjoying the walk with my kids. I was thinking about how many likes am I going to get? And I was Mm -hmm. like, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, And yet, so looking back through this little COVID season we are coming out of now, I I think with whether it's Fox or CNN, I, I don't think our adults handled anxiety well. You know, everything was mm-hmm. us versus them and fearful. So, uh, not, by the way, please, listeners or viewers, we're not trying to pick on Fox or CNN or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. We're just trying to acknowledge there are a number of things that absolutely, without any doubt, kind of scientifically are raising our anxiety levels. Mm-hmm. And those of us who are adults are not immune to this. And the young people that we care about are even more susceptible because they don't have the social stability or the brain development or the, the life experience that we ha- many adults have to cope. So if it's hard for me to cope with these things, how much harder for a teen with acne and hormones and who's all, failing geometry, yeah, and like all the other things that were hard <laughs> enough of being a yeah. teenager, plus everything that's really hard about all the adulting today. Right. Um, what a what a messy cocktail to find themselves in. And that's if they've got like a like a great cookie cutter, awesome family. But if you throw in family dynamics in there, it's like, where do I get support? I'm drowning. My friends are also drowning. My teachers don't get it. My parents don't get it. Everybody's mad at each other. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's annoyed by me. Yeah. So um, let me just kind of pause and take a breath here and let each of you speak as well. But I just want to acknowledge we're not trying to, I'm not trying to, say, woe is us, woe is the world, these poor kids. I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge life is always hard, and there are a number of factors today that are especially challenging, and um, I think we're in some ways just beginning to realize how damaging some of these factors are, and um, our young people are hurting. Yeah, Yeah. it's tough. So, so that's uh, that's some of what's behind our conversation today and, and this book. Um, I don't any any other kind of diagnostic or things you either of you want to acknowledge of. Hey, let's not forget to name this difficult thing. I'm sure people think, listening can think of yeah. their own. What about this? And and we're not trying to be exhaustive by any means. We're just some um, you know examples of of what's what's challenging right now. Yeah. I think I think you said it well when you said yeah everything that we're going through right now our our you know our, this this coming youth generation mm-hmm. also are going through it as well plus like 
on the, on top of like developing uh, their their brain, developing emotions, acne hormones. Where, yeah, where are you going to college? Where are you going to college? Uh, family like family like dynamics and like households that are unstable for them. Like yeah, yeah. and that doesn't mean it was better sixty years ago because no. there e- even when there was one man and one woman in marriage for life, there was certainly abuse and bad things going on then. So we're not trying to pretend like the world was something else. Just acknowledging there is a lot of hurt and and brokenness in the world today so the the subtitle here brenda kind of lands with the through the power of connection as as a place for healing to begin uh what what does that mean for you or i don't know if you've read the whole book yet or where do you where do you think it's going or just as a, a person who cares about young people and a leader in our church how do you see connection as part of this way forward yeah I did read it all, but it was a few months back. I didn't mean to call you out, by the way. No, no, no. So so I don't remember everything that the that the (laughs) book says. Did you you even read the thing, (laughs) Brenda? (laughs) You know what? I did. Did you hand in the book report? (laughs) Let's see if there's any markings, underlinings near the end here. Uh, Spine is cracking for the first time. (laughs) (laughs) No, but this power of connection. We talked about this slightly at our life group this week. Was just that we're not meant to do life alone, Mm. whether you're part of a church community or not, like you're not meant to do it alone or to struggle alone. Um, And everybody wants to feel like they are known, like they matter and somebody notices and sees and, and cares no matter what age you are. But I think especially when you're a youth, a young person, you want to feel like you matter to somebody. And even if you've got parents that love you and are wanting to connect, there's something about connecting with people that are not your family too, Mm. because your parents, they have to love you. So they're going to love you no matter what. So so maybe it feels less sincere, like, like they have to, is that what you're saying? I think so. And I think once you get older, you can kind of look back and see, Oh, I totally get it now. And I have, and they did love me. They were doing these things for, um, like they were, they were wanting the best for me, but sometimes you don't see that in the moment. You just know, oh man, like I, they didn't, they said no to going out with my friends on a Friday night when everybody was going to be doing who knows what. Yeah. Cause, they, get cause they're mean and they want to ruin my life. Yeah. They don't want me to have any fun at all, but when and you they never let me do anything, never. <laughs> And everyone else got to do that. Everyone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know that your parents you love always you. always do this. But to have other adults that you're not related to that don't have to love you, don't mm-hmm. have to like you, but they want to know your name and they want to know how school is going genuinely and what you like to do for fun and just want to talk to you, that, that means a lot to to a teenager, to a youth. It means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, uh, uh, listeners and viewers uh, uh, share about my Saturday night last week. Um, Charlotte, my wife, and I, uh, Shane and his wife, Lauren, Brenda and her husband, Adam, the six of us went out to dinner and had an escape room experience to celebrate a couple of birthdays. And we could have invited more friends, but there's a limit. Six people is the max. So anyway, <laughs> whatever. Um, but... <laughs> We had, we had dinner and an escape room together and I've spent probably three times that amount of time either on Netflix, Hulu, or my phone this week for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Probably more than three times, Mm -hmm. way, way more hours with the screen. And I don't know how you can quantify joy or satisfaction, but I promise you the three hours that we had together it adds up to way more joy and satisfaction than the 20 hours I've had. Highlight of the week. Yeah. Highlight of my month or quarter (laughs) even. Like it was so beautiful just to be together with a person and people and laugh together and eat together and not worry about screens. Mm -hmm. And, And yet the other six days this week, I have sought meaning and connection and joy and satisfaction in screens. Like I know it intellectually. I know it experientially. And yet I'm still not going for a walk with my friends most days or even just having a conversation with my wife instead of plopping down and watching the latest thing on Amazon. And to be fair, you can have some connection with people through technology, especially people that 
don't live in the same town as you, but I do mm-hmm. think that's a really small part of it. And it's still not the same as face to face connection with people. Yeah. And I guess yeah. for me, what I was saying was I'm not even trying to connect with people through yeah. my screens. Yeah. I'm just scrolling and looking at pictures and stupid videos and watching, mm-hmm. you know, created content for me. Um, so yeah. sorry, I went down the tangent, but just to say, we're talking about connection for kids and mm-hmm. teens and I'm hearing that going, Oh, I want that. <laughs> and and I got a glimpse of it last week and it was amazing. And how, how can I have that more? And, um, maybe I got to call people or text them and schedule it and prioritize it and not just wait for some, cause it's easier to just pick this up. And that it reminds me a lot, uh, during the youth gathering, uh, we made sure we, as in my wife and I, uh, when we had all the youth, we made sure to kind of have a session for the guys and girls just to kind of be together. And there was like a manly man one. And I'm like, all right, we're going to go to this one, guys. It'll be awesome. It was a uh, Bill Yonker. I think yeah, was his yeah. name. All right. Uh, it was leading it. And I fully was expecting it to be like, you know, Tim Allen, home and Bruben, like guys, ha, 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 ha. But it was it was almost the complete opposite, and it was like, <laughs> like kind of, kind of what we're. Shane does a lot of impressions. <laughs> in case you're wondering, listeners, yeah. that was Shane. That wasn't an audio clip. We did not bring in Tim Allen for that. <laughs> that was that was Shane. So, oh no, bye, bye, Tim Allen. Oh, Buzz Lightyear's <laughs> leaving. Oh, oh, all right, no, uh, but uh, this session, it was it was really awesome because I got something out of it. I know all the all the guys did too, just because we kind of took a moment to just be together after mm-hmm. it but the main uh point that bill yonker was making um i mean he, he talked about faith and and um kind of faith walk and our christianity whatnot but the main point he kept drilling into everyone in the room he was like it's it's all about relationships um just people uh, like as a as a pastor as, as he uh, a pastor and whatnot else he deals with a lot of grief and people on their deathbeds and whatnot and mm-hmm. Uh, he made it clear, like in their final days, their biggest regrets were always like relationships mm-hmm. and connections. They mm-hmm. they never reestablished and whatnot else. And yep. I get hit home for a lot of the the youth were there, and I and I hope I hope they remember it. Like it would be good to like have that conversation with them again mm-hmm. about that. But just like how are your relationships like, and just a lot of what we're talking about just has to do with human to human interaction and without that i think there is we do feel that emptiness loneliness that void of of something we're missing even if it's just somebody to process it with and which is why i don't know i get i haven't read the book either but (laughs) the book is called seen and i know that's really just what, what we're trying to say for a lot of parents uh leaders adults um even youth to youth, uh, um, just are, are you, are the people around you being seen? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. are the, how are those relationships? Are they being heard? I think that's just a really important like piece in our existence. <laughs> it's just yeah. our relationships. Is that the, I, I just rewatched Avatar a couple weeks ago. And Which, uh, the first one. I never saw the second mm-hmm. one. The Isn't, blue, blue people blue Avatar? People, yeah. Okay. Isn't that like how they say I love you in the show? Like they say, like, I see you? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure if that's when their tails are touching or not, but there's some no, weird no, stuff no, no, going no. on. That's, like, that's, that's something like different. Like, that's their, like, uh, like agape. Like, yeah, like their, is it their braids you. touch too in that moment? Or is that well, something else? I don't well, I, that's, All you right, know, it's like different, different, different words perhaps. of love, you okay. know? Oh. <laughs> but I don't know. But but I remember that moment, kind of like, they look at each other like, I see you. Mm-hmm. And the first, the guy's like, no, I, oh, I see you. And they're like, that's that's not what we mean here. Like, like I acknowledge you know, like I'm, just, mm-hmm. I'm not just like you're yeah like you're not just like background or you're seen you matter you're not invisible you're not worthless mm-hmm. you you have substance like there you matter mm. yeah and i don't know listeners people listening to this that that's entirely up to you like and how and what you're gonna do when you see that youth when you see that person in front of you like what are you only you are gonna make that difference and like true. change that person's life for the better just by asking like how are you like i think of how many people cross my path who are probably 
dying for anybody to just say hi, to make eye contact and smile. And how many times I just am in my own world, in the zone, I'm trying to get stuff done or I'm on my phone and distracted and, and miss those opportunities probably lots of times. Yeah. And, and, and to be, so there's a, a kind of very physical, like I just acknowledge that you're a human, like I see you in that mm-hmm. sense, but, but in terms of mattering and value, like I see you apart from, or, or despite from like your failings or accomplishments, mm-hmm. like I don't just see you because you're the pretty one or you're the fastest one or the smartest. And I see you despite the fact that you maybe feeling guilt or shame about something and you, you feel like you're nothing and shuffled up. Like, no, I, I still see you mm-hmm. regardless of performance, excellence or failure. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, Brenda, if, if you're far enough into the book or if, if we are even in a spot in this conversation, but, I'd love to take a couple minutes as we wrap up here and maybe just brainstorm. What are some next steps? Um, somebody's listening to this. Maybe they're a parent. Maybe they're a teen. Maybe they're somebody who is around young people or just other people in general. What what might some next steps be if, okay, uh, Pastor Shane Brenda, I've heard you say that our young people are hurting. I really care. And I see them every Sunday, perhaps. Mm-hmm. What what do I do? What comes to mind for me is a like a version of what we did at the beginning of this episode of highs and lows is that's an easy way to start a conversation with somebody. If you don't know what to talk about, whether it's with a teenager or another adult. What have you been sniffing recently? Not that one, right. but you could <laughs> depending on the level of comfort in that relationship. But hey, my name is, what was your name again? cool. How's your week been? Like what was maybe something fun that happened this week? Something good. And maybe something not so good. Like, I'm really curious. I don't know you that well. And then maybe share something for you too. That'd be a very easy way to highs and lows. Uh, hi, my name is hi. My name is I can't remember your name or can Mm -hmm. you remind me of your name? Mm -hmm. Um, I often will ask my kids, um, what my kids are, well, whatever. Um, they listen to this. So I need to be careful sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes teenagers or preteens aren't terribly responsive to questions. How was your day? Fine. Anything happened? No. So, you know, sometimes a little more direction, like anything make you laugh today? Mm-hmm. Uh, was anything frustrating today? Mm-hmm. Um, anything discouraging or you want to celebrate? And they might still say no. And I, I guess I would also say that's okay, too. Um, you expressing like the value of your care given and expressed is not contingent on how much they say back to you. Like Mm -hmm. I can say, Hey, I can't remember your name. How was your week this week? And they might just say, you know, Steve, fine. Great. You know, great. Maybe -hmm. maybe it's not a weeping embrace and you laughed and cried and experienced life, Mm -hmm. but you could ask him next week and the following week and the following week. And they know that you care and you're going to show up and be there for them. I don't know. I guess I'm, I guess yeah, I'm asking, does yeah. that count? Cause uh, yeah, our I, people are probably going to get a whole lot of nothing and fine. Anything happen? Nope. Yes. To where you feel like you're, you're conducting an interview and you're like struggling to get any words out of them. But if it makes you feel better, their parents are probably feeling the same way, <laughs> struggling to get anything out, but just kind of startling them out of the, Oh, I was just on my own, just kind of floating in this space. But you broke into that bubble, even if it's for five seconds and that matters. And it does make a difference. And I also just want to add to, like, I don't think that's even that weird. Like, I, I think some kids are much, like, can be very closed off, but anyone can. Oh, sure. I, I'm just reminded, mm-hmm. like, most adults are the like, same. Every, every relationship has to start somewhere mm-hmm. and it's always going to be at the surface. So, like, talking about the weather might be dumb and mundane, but. You're not, it, you're probably going to hurt a relationship if you say, hey, tell me about the last time you cried. Who are you? Like, what are you like? <laughs> no. Get out of here. Like, it's yes, not, that's you're not, not going to break the surface yeah. on the first go. And over time, like you're saying, like if week one, it's just, hi, my name is, what was your name again? Even if it's just that. And the next day, next week is like, okay, I'm pretty sure your name was this, right? Sorry if I get it wrong again, but my name was this. Um, how was your last week? And then the next week there's a little bit more and eventually it's not so weird. It's not so uncomfortable. I think it will get easier over time. And 
that conversation may grow, that relationship will grow. So, so yeah. grownups, adults, we're going to need you to be persistent here. Like we're going to need you to be the grownups. And mm-hmm. it's really easy for me to be pouty. That was one of my highs and lows is that I'm not a good parent. And then I turn off my engagement and I don't do a good job. Mm-hmm. So I know what it's like to feel discouraged and say, fine. Um, but for the sake of our young people, I'm asking you to ask how they are. And even if they give you nothing, like keep loving them, showing up, um, uh, we have a, a member of the congregation here who's f- uh, going to be a pastor now. He's finishing up his seminary education next year. And a big influence in his life was somebody in the congregation saw that he was wearing a UW sweatshirt or a T-shirt, University of Washington. And like, oh, you, you go to UW? I went to UW. Like, friendship born. <laughs> like, that. all it was, like, I noticed something. Mm-hmm. I, I see this about you. Um, it could be something as like apparel, I, you know, you're wearing a Seahawks hat. Have you ever gone to a game? Mm-hmm. Uh, or or um, I, I think another uh, idea I would offer to our listeners is to be genuinely interested. That well, sounds obvious, but um, I'm too often, I like to know things and I, I think I know more than I do. And to come with a place of, of humble ignorance to say, hey, I I don't even know what people your age are into. Like, what do you care about? You know, mm. like what, what, what is a, how old are you? 14. What do 14 year olds like think about during the day? <laughs> like don't, don't assume, you know, or like, so what do you do? Like, uh, you know, nothing or, you know, Instagram or whatever their video game system is like, okay. Like, so what, what's a PS4? I, like, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. You don't have to know what, you don't have to be cool to care about young people. Just know that you're not cool and still care about the young people. <laughs> like, I don't know what half the kids are talking about, but I'm interested. Um, my kids are into Pokemon right now. Uh, I don't know what's happening. And I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? What, uh, the, so is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. <laughs> that makes me, <laughs> but think I of- care. I care about you. It makes me think of uh, playing Mario Kart with the youth here, and I'm just mashing buttons as fast as possible. Oh, and at some point, like my character is dead, and I thought I was still playing, <laughs> and they're just like, "Oh, Brenda, like oh. that's all right. She's hey, playing hey, with hey, us." You never plugged so, your controls. Yeah, you didn't have to get good at Mario Kart no. in order to impress the kids. <laughs> no, but I wanted to play to play with them. Yeah. Because I really don't like Mario Kart. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's not that fun for me. I like regular Super Mario Brothers, like the... Do, do, old, do, do, yeah, do, do. exactly. But the Mario Kart is not my thing. And there, there, there's other ones that I've played with them. But yeah, it was just, uh, well, I'm just going to do it because this is something you like to do and I want to hang out with you. So That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Shane, any, any thoughts on how uh, someone who cares about young people and wants to show up and be a significant connection point, how they might start? Yeah, I I think you, you kind of touch, you, you touched on it when you said you're not going to be cool. Just don't <laughs> don't don't just like don't worry about yourself. Like uh, <laughs> it's not about you. Get over yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. But I like I, it's good to hear. It's like I don't want to say it, like I don't want to say it like that though. Oh yeah. Like, but <laughs> no, but I mean you're like nicer than me. No, but like. You like you are significant to this person's life, even if you think like you, you're just you're falling flat, and they think you're the lamest person ever. That's okay. Like, like don't what like don't worry about it. <laughs> when, when you just said you're significant, I, I, some of the things we've been saying have been um, almost uh, interviewing. You know, trying to get the kids to talk, mm-hmm. which isn't helpful for some. My, my my daughter in particular does not like us asking questions after school. And so I specifically don't ask her anything. We'll get in the car and I'll say, Hey, I care about your day, but I'm not going to bother you about it. If there's anything you want to share, I'm around. And like, there's a relief from her of like, okay, could you tell mommy not to ask so many questions? Like she's like, <laughs> so, um, you know, when you said, but uh, I forgot what you said, Shane, but more or less you're seen, you're, I oh, see you're, you, like you matter, you have value. You know, if you hear at St. Luke's or another church, just go up to a young person and say, Hey, I see you and I'm glad you're here. Mm. 
Yeah. My my name's Laverne, and <laughs> I'm I'm glad you're here today. That would go a long way. Like really, like, I think it, it would. would. You don't have to ask him anything. You don't have to care about Pokemon. You don't have to play Mario Kart with them. You can just say, "I don't know your name, but I want you to know I'm really glad you're here, mm-hmm. and you matter." Like yeah. that's huge. Everyone listening can do that. Yeah. And um, Brenda's smiling. Um, Shane's well, he was smiling a second ago. <laughs> yeah. But just to say, like smile again. Um, <laughs> like. I really think that would probably be the most, like one of the most yeah. significant things people can do is just say, Hey, I see you. I'm glad you're here. Mm-hmm. I care about you. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just that in passing it, you and just walk keep away. walking. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to get to know you sometime. Um, I'm around. If you ever want to uh, connect, mm-hmm. say hi. Um, again, my name's Laverne. I'll, I'll remind you next week. Yeah. Walk away. Yep. I love that. Worst, worst thing that could happen is, I don't know. I, I, yeah, the, nothing. That Shane I, I guy is a weird tried. mustache. Like, Fine. Yeah. The worst thing that, that that could happen is to say you didn't try. Like, yeah. It's yeah. probably the worst thing is if you're going to be judgmental and show up and critique them. Oh yeah, below. okay. That, that's that's um, but, yeah, that's a. But from there, worse. from there, and you know, yeah, they're, they're right. Even if they just go, who was that old lady? Great, it's an old lady who cares about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a whole bunch more. Yep. And we're we're working, even us adults. So if young people listen to this, um, there are many adults around you who care, and we're not very good at expressing that. And we're trying. We're trying. So even this mm-hmm. conversation is just three people at a table going, "Man, we really care, and we we understand that it's hard. I don't even understand how hard it is, but I care, and I want to express that care better. And I might need young people to tell me how to do that better." So um, if young people listening to this, you can email me, Shane, grab us on a Sunday morning and say, hey, actually, that's a terrible idea. This would be better. Cool. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I will gladly um, uh, not edit because we don't know how to edit, but I will gladly record another podcast and correct all the things we got wrong in this <laughs> one. If it's going to help connect with young people and yeah. support them. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Brenda, final thoughts as our, our uh, special guest for the day with, with our blue book with the squiggle brain on the top. <laughs> uh, just echoing that encouragement to connect. And I think what you said earlier, the, um, be genuinely interested. I think youth can tell if you're not genuinely interested. So, yeah, show them that you care. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, um, Shane, for all the work you do um, production, by the way, to make all this happen. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're listening or watching this, it's because Shane clicked a bunch of times and did what he does. So, and he didn't accidentally delete and this. And he didn't delete he it. Didn't Go, Shane. He delete so well done, Shane. That's a low <laughs> bar, by the way. Brenda, thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing the most absurd question of the day we've ever had. You're welcome. Um, it's not a competition, but if it was, that would be the weirdest. Definitely. And uh, yeah, listeners, viewers, thanks for taking time. Um, thanks for being part of the conversation. And we look forward to continuing that conversation. That's the end of the episode. But we want to continue the conversation. Continue the conversation by sharing this episode, subscribing, or leaving a review. Connect with us on Instagram at 2414podcast. Connect with us through email at 2414 at stlukes-church.com. Or best of all, keep the conversation going by inviting someone to process with you so that you can each walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. If you happen to be in the Seattle-Tacoma area of Washington, stop by on a Sunday morning and say hi. 2414 is a podcast produced by St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Federal Way, Washington. To find more content, discover upcoming opportunities to connect in person, or to support the show, head on over to stlukes-church.com. Thanks for walking with us.